Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining our session. Um, we've put together 31 tools of the trade to make affiliate marketing easier, and so what we've done is tried to find a collection of tools that we've either used or had other people, um, in my case, more tools that people have recommended to me that were really powerful and very um, adaptable to some of the challenges that we all face in managing our sites. So that's what we wanted to do. Let's see. Um, so first off, I get to tell you that Let's see, we appreciate your time and effort to be here, and um, we count on, on attendee feedback. So that's also how they determine whether or not we get to come back and talk to everybody again. So if you wouldn't mind, please, completing the feedback forms at the end and turning them in, that would be great. And they are also doing, um, let's see, each day five entries are picked for uh, networking plus passes with three session tickets for Affiliate Summit West. So that's always nice. So if you get the chance, please do complete the feedback. So to get started here, um, just wanted to introduce ourselves quite quickly. My name's Janine Crooks. I'm the client services manager with Affiliate Window. We're an affiliate network. So just uh, those are some of the programs that we work with. Um, John Labruto is on my far right. And John has also got extensive experience in the affiliate marketing industry. Those are many of the companies that he's worked with. And I've worked with him many times. So I can vouch that he's amazing. And the third member of our panel is Mike Allen, who's sitting right here in the middle with us. And those are all different companies that um, he has been part of or owned. So Mike is also a wonderful resource. So we're happy to have him on our panel as well. So to get started, our plan today is we've got stuff divided into five basic categories. We've got social media development, site monitoring, office management, marketing research and content development and we've got some tools in each one of those aspects um, if you've got questions along the way and want to ask them we're comfortable with that um, and then we'll also have time for questions at the end or at least that's the plan so to start off with our very first <coughs> one under social media development is a company called follower wonk and one of the things that i like about this this is one that focuses specifically on who your followers are within twitter um, and it was actually created by uh, the Moz team. And, you know, they're always amazing when it comes to kind of analytics on things like this. Um, so it's going to help you know things like who are your followers, where are they located, you know, uh, when do they tweet, what's their authority. Um, what I like is, is that in addition to just seeing, you know, their name and their Twitter bio, you can find out a lot more about the people that are on there. But one of the things that I really like is they've got a lot of very easy graphs to be able to instantly analyze what your followers look like. Um, in terms of, of how their composition is, in terms of um, when they're following, who their influencers are. You can take a look at who some of your competitors are and see if you're overlapping in the influencer follower category or else know people that you, know, you want to go out and try and recruit to become your followers. So it gives you a, a good chance to kind of get some of that competitive analytics in terms of what you want to do. Um, you can also see on there what your users love. So if there's a particular tweet that a lot of people responded to, you're going to be able to know that right away and be able to customize your content even more. It just makes it fast. I mean, they're not the only tool that does this, but it's a very good, easy-to-use analytics tool. And so that's part of the reason why it made it here. Um, they do have free versions of the tool, so you can um, use it um, free for a while, but the maximum you'd ever pay is $79 per month for all of the bells and whistles. So. That's follower wonk. Um, our next tool is DrumUp. Yes, uh, DrumUp is, is a very useful tool. And uh, if, you, if you've ever followed someone on uh, Twitter or LinkedIn that seems to always have a relevant article to link to or creative hashtags, they may be using DrumUp. Um, there's other services like it, but DrumUp has a free version where you can integrate one Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook account you will get fresh content recommendations along the keywords that uh, that you put in there and uh, you can have a one-click uh, integration where it, it becomes part of your feed and it's scheduled into your your uh, uh, Twitter or LinkedIn profile um, but you also can schedule these things by hand you can uh, take the hashtag recommendations that they give or change them edit them you can retweet or, or uh, or uh, have a, a uh, repeat schedule, I should say, um, with it. So it's, it's a great tool, free version for one account or 
uh, $19 a month and up. If you have an agency with lots and lots of accounts, you can get unlimited for $199 a month. Great. The next tool that we wanted to bring up to your attention is uh, Buffer, which is a social media tool. John? Yeah, and so, you know, when we were putting this list together, we were looking at this from, well, I was at least looking at this from the perspective of a small business owner. It's something that I've done. And, you know, we have limited resources, and we understand the limits of having a one or two or three person operation. You want to go ahead and look for a professional feel and be able to present your business as um, something that would be on par with some of the bigger guys. And, you know, there's so many free tools available, but Buffer really stood out to me because, you know, with social media being so important, um, it really is a good, good tool for a one, a person, one or two person operation. You can schedule your social media posts. You can go ahead and look at it from a time zone perspective, you know, stagger those posts so that everyone gets it at noon or at three or at two o'clock in their particular time zone. Um, basically, you're going to uh, have strategic timing of not only the post, but maybe the geolocation of that particular IP address. Maybe it is city, you know, uh, drop down to the city level. Um, it's a good basic reporting package that's involved to understand what the open rate is, the impressions, the clicks. Um, basically, develop your own su success metrics in the reporting package. Um, you know, you're really tailoring these campaigns by the different kinds of media, um, trying to have strategic messages, you know, possibly group your particular uh, re recipients into specific strategic categories so that you have different messages for different groups. Um, also, you can have different messages for different types of media, one for Twitter, one for, uh, for Facebook. Um, they do have free uh, images that are built into packages that they have, so you can use that for your social media posts on Facebook, as an example. And of course, they have mobile access. The free version is very usable. I tried to get as much free freeware as possible in, in these lists because really, again, tailoring it for that one, two, three, four person operation or department for that matter um, that really needs this kind of automation. And the nice thing about it is you could check on the mobile, see your results, um, not have to worry. You could schedule it you know, a week in advance, a day in advance, or, or just do it on the fly depending on a particular situation that may have occurred in your industry, your business, or your, your company. Um, so I did enjoy this one and take a look at, at Buffer just to see if it makes sense for you. Our next offering is Tiny URL. We've seen it, but John uses it a lot. Yeah, and so this is a silly one, right? So, but you know, silly is important. Um, you know, basically what you're doing here is shortening your long URLs and you have a particular company here that's providing the service. You would be using the Tiny URL slash a custom, um, a custom, uh, shortened um, string of characters at that point, both letter, alphanumeric, uh, numeric, so that you, you can basically hide your links if you want or make it easier to explain your particular links. Um, you could have a custom redirect with that particular alphanumeric uh, string. Um, they also have toolbar access so you can do this on the fly when you do set up your affiliate links. Um, the service has no real paid option, so you wonder what, how are they making money and exactly what the scenario is here. I'm, I'm imagining they're monitoring traffic, and a lot of this information does kind of funnel it to some business intelligence end, but I don't see it as um, a detractor at this point. We do use this uh, occasionally when we need a, a, you know, a bit.ly that we haven't paid for in an enterprise version of some other product. Um, it's helpful setting up these links for specific landing pages that you may want to um, take from a button or go ahead and, and send out by email and you don't want to have that long string to communicate uh, you know, where, where this particular link is going to. So this is a silly little one, but it's something that we all may be able to use at times. Indeed. So now we're going to move on to site monitoring and management. So the first one is Uptime Robot. This is one I use all the time. And by all the time, I mean 24 hours a day. Uh, if any, any website I need to monitor uh, or a, a particular landing page, um, I put it in Uptime Robot. It's uh, great to monitor clients or uh, if you're doing a paid search ad, um, you want to make sure that that page is working or uh, you can do that. Another great uh, thing, if you're starting a new blog and maybe uh, on WordPress, and WordPress doesn't have, this, this will be a little bit on the geek side, but doesn't have true cron jobs, but it has WP uh, crons, so it needs traffic to update the automation on it. Well, you can ping it through Uptime Robot, so you can ping it every five minutes for free, or for 450 a month, you can get the one-minute monitoring and one-minute pinging. 
So it's, it's a really great tool. You can set up 50 different monitors at no charge. You can get text message alerts on the paid version, but you can get uh, direct tweets uh, and other e email alerts if there's any downtime. And it's got a beautiful dashboard to help you know how much downtime or uptime you've had. So it's a really, really handy tool, easy to use. Highly recommend. Next, we're going to talk about Versionista. This is another great tool that uh, I have running um, all the time as well. And if you ever need to monitor a page, maybe you're an affiliate manager and you want to see if uh, your affiliates have updated the uh, content on a particular page, or you need to see what a competitor is doing, you can put in that URL and then uh, Virginista will, <coughs> will check it every day and see if anything has been removed or added to that page. You get an email alert about it and then you, you click the uh, link in the email, you get a side-by-side -side comparison. If it's red, it was removed. If it's green, it's new. It, it's that easy. They have a free version. I think you can do five URLs or you can pay about $19 a month starting it and end up to uh, get additional URLs. I think it's about a dollar a URL per month uh, with a little bit better deal as you buy more. But really a handy tool, great thing to, uh, to test out. One more that's important is Pingdom. <clears throat> Pingdom is a little bit like Uptime Robot in that you can do site monitoring, but they also have some really great tools that I found very helpful. Um, Google is uh, on record as saying that site speed is very important and can improve your ranking. If a faster site, uh, if all other factors are equal, can uh, give you a, a little boost on the SEO side. So it's good to know where any slowdown is on your site. Could it be the web host? Could it be a plugin that you just put on your, your site? A lot of times you'll find it's social media plugins. They're often very slow. Um, Pingdom uh, on their uh, page speed tests can tell you where those slowdowns are on a line by line basis. It will let you know how many requests the uh, server is having to make to load that page, how big the page is, gives a page speed score, and it tells you where the problems are, the bottlenecks. It's got a colorful interface, uh, I think it's called a waterfall, where you can see it color coded everything that's loading on that page. Uh, it's really helpful, highly recommend. You can also check it from various parts of the world and uh, various U.S. locations. So you, if, you know, if you're serving the U.K. market you need to, and your server's hosted in the U.S., you need to know what your speed is there because it's going to vary quite a bit. Um, also, they have DNS testing, which you may register your domain name at GoDaddy, but setting up the server and all those other things uh, can be a little complicated. Uh, Pingdom can check and make sure you did everything correctly on, on that setup with the IP address and all those things. It's quite helpful. Next, if you're involved with mobile sites, it's Responsinator. I like this tool as well, especially if you're designing something new. You want your uh, site to be to respond pro properly to all the different screen sizes. You have the large, you know, 20 plus inch monitors, then you have the little bitty screens. Apple, Android, all these different platforms that it's got to look right on. And, you know, I don't own all these devices. I uh, don't have even friends that have all the devices that would be available. And yet you need to make sure the site looks good. So I found Responsinator to be a, a great tool that's uh, free to use. And I can get a, a screenshot that shows what my site will look like. Uh, or you can, if you're doing competitive analysis to see uh, other sites or a client, you, you can check them out as well. And uh, you can edit the page for a while, run it through Responsinator, how's it look, go back, edit some more till you get it right. Now they have, th the free version is great. If you are an agency and want to uh, show off to your clients, you can actually white label it and have your own Responsinators. But it's a great little tool to use if you're a developer or just just an affiliate uh, working on your page. Another one we wanted to bring to your attention was Help Scout. And Help Scout really is focused on customer service. Um, no matter how big you are, even if you're just a one-person blog and just getting started, you're going to need to have some sort of a customer service functionality. And that's what this site provides. 
Um, and you can start off from free and then you know go up from there. But one of the things that they like, that a lot of people really like about it, is the way that you're able to track through uh, on any given ticket that comes in. Um, you can share that information with other members of your team. You can keep track of the notes on anything that's going through it. But for your customer, their experience is most important too. And basically what they're doing is sending you an email. And you know everybody who's out there who's online is comfortable with sending in an email. You're not making them have to learn what your support ticket process is. You know they just simply send you something, and that's how you respond back to them. So you know that's that's a very easy, very comfortable way for them to have a good experience about it. Um, the other thing that they've got that is really popular is they've got a feature called Traffic Cop, and it makes sure that two people aren't responding at the same time and you know, possibly giving the customer two different um, pieces of information. So it will actually block you from doing that. Nobody can overlap. And um, that's really critical, but it also can help you realize whether or not somebody's actually gotten back to the client. Um, a lot of people uh, like the fact that you can also customize it a lot. So you can actually upload your signature, you can upload uh, your photograph, if that's what you want to do as well, into, um, into the responses that go out to the consumer. So it's just a nice, very easy to use tool. Um, you know, they've got some things that you can do. Uh, there's companies that are larger that are using it as well. So you don't, it's not just for tiny guys, it's got scalability built into it but it is going to be a good, friendly way to respond to your customers. And you know, we all know that one thing people can't wait to do is to complain about something online. This is one way to make sure that your customer service or your support functionality isn't going to be one of those things that they complain about. The next thing we wanted to talk to you about was Google Analytics. And, and this should be familiar to everybody. And, and the nice thing about Google, and actually the frightening thing about Google, is they have such scalability. You know, they have the freeware entry level that is pretty powerful, and then of course it moves up to enterprise level um, in most cases. Of course they're collecting the information. God knows what they're doing it with it, but you know, we all use it. We use it on business level, we use it on small business level, and in many cases we can't li really live without some of this intelligence. You know, back in the day, you know, business intelligence from a small business owner was, you know, you go to your competitors store and see what they have on the shelves, you know. And then when you got really fancy for marketing, you bought a laser printer and you had really slick uh, handouts. But, you know, now there's a lot of powerful tools. We're going over so many of them that are, a lot of them are free. Um, you know, with Google Analytics, you're looking at a campaign intelligence. You're specifically um, adding particular Google uh, links to your link so that that information is captured into their database and then coming back on a report. Um, you know, basically you're looking at your your AdWords, you know, what's worked on an SEM scenario, you know, your keyword attribution, is there uh, an ROI to success with this particular campaign, as an example. Um, you're reporting on multiple channels, so if you do have feedback from social media or if you have feedback, or I should say backlinks from um, particular online campaigns or affiliate marketing, um, you can go ahead and report based on those particular channels and get an understanding of who the customer is, their geolocation, how they click through, why they click through, what ads they use, Used. Um, and also, how well did they use your site? You know, where was the drop off? Exactly, did they complete the conversion? Um, th this is really powerful stuff, and, and to have these kind of packages in such freeware scenario, it's it's really uh, something that we all can use. Uh, of course, depending on the neck of it, setting it up, testing it, making sure your links, and then actually utilizing the data. Um, most of the time, all of us have so much data available to us, it's now a question of really just sizing it up and figuring out what we need and then being able to get it on a periodic basis so we can make good decisions on our sites and on our businesses. Um, but this is very useful and it's something that um, you know you all should look at if you're not using it at this point also. Very good. Now it's time for the office management segment. Um, the first one that I wanted to bring up was a company called <laughs> Evernote. And this is a note-taking app that has 150 million users. So there's a whole lot of people that are finding it very, very, very useful. Um, basically, it's a free app. You can start off uh, with a 60 megabyte version, which is enough to give it a pretty good test. But you can save just about anything on there. You can save web page URLs. You can save handwritten notes that you've scanned in there. You can save um, pictures and documents. They've got actually a drag and drop place so that if you've got something that you want to be able to pull in there and be able to save, you can do that. Um, it's got a calendar in there and will remind you about things that are coming up, whether it's you know an important business meeting or that dentist appointment that you didn't want to miss. Um, it's got a, a kind of a neat function called the web clipper. 
so that if there's an article that you want to save, it's going to just save the text of the article, you know, and any images that are in it. But it's not going to save, you know, all of the navigation on the side and all those lovely little banner ads that sometimes show up and can be kind of irritating. It'll just focus on the content. Um, you can actually dictate into it. So if you've got that functionality, you know, on your phone, which I think just about all of us have, then you can go ahead and save notes that way. So it can be used very, very quickly and easily for you in anything that you want to do. So, you know, I, I like a lot of those things. It's got um, a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. It's got like 50 of them, actually. So you can just push and click and save fast. And I think that's one of the, one of the nicest functionalities about it is you're not navigating through a million different things to be able to actually try and use it. Because so often when you want to take a note, it's because you've just got a second you want to save that somewhere and be able to find it again. And the other part that's really nice about it is that the content that you put in there is scannable. So even if you were to put in a PDF or something like that and you just remembered one word in the title, you could actually search by that word and the system will be able to find it for you. So there's a lot of kind of fun little, you know, nice ways to be able to use it to kind of keep your life in order. You know, remember we all used to carry those little notebooks and have a million pages in there to write? Now you can just have one app and it's going to make it nicer for you. Um, in addition to the free version, of course, you can upgrade from there. So their plus version runs $24.99 a year. So, you know, I mean, you're talking two bucks a month to be able to do that. And if you want the industrial strength one and you need more than just the one gig from the plus version, there's a premium version that goes to 10 gigs and that is $49.99 a month. So, you know, even though it's not free the whole way through, it seemed like it was pretty darn affordable for less than a dollar a week to be able to keep track of everything. I know I need that in my life, so thought I wanted to share that one with you. Um, the next one that we wanted to talk about was Doodle. Doodle's great for those group schedulings. And by group, it could be two people or it could be, you know, 15 people or, or more. Uh, the old way of emailing back and forth over and over again on, no, I'm not available this time, uh, but th these dates gets a little bit old, especially about a third or fourth email, and I'm starting to feel embarrassed that I don't have any time on the schedule. I'm worrying about overbooking or double booking, I, mean, I should say. And uh, Doodle really makes this simple. You send a link and the, uh, you select your best times, the times you're not available, uh, and then Doodle figures it out for both of you or the whole group. You can use it for family gatherings to uh, business things, uh, lots and lots of, of uh, opportunity. It integrates and syncs very well with all the major calendars, and uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, easy to use, free version to uh, very affordable, less than a, a dollar a, a week option for the uh, premium. Okay. And next we wanted to talk about Wonderlist. This is another one that I, I use daily. It's, uh, it's a powerful uh, to-do list and it's synced. I wanted something that I could sync on my phone and the uh, office that I could uh, have personal and uh, business lists and keep different projects separate. And this does all of that. Uh, they have uh, desktop and uh, phone versions, online versions, uh, they have an Apple Watch version, a Kindle version, all these kind of things where you can sync uh, all, the, uh, all your lists. And you can share the lists, you can have notes back and forth with someone you're sharing. So if you're discussing the project, you can, uh, if you're doing a team on their professional level, you can uh, assign uh, tasks. It's really, really helpful and very easy to use. It it's actually was purchased by Microsoft uh, a few months back. Maybe, maybe it's a year by now. But uh, so I, I think they're going to be around for a while. I've used them for years and uh, very, very pleased with it. Highly recommend. Free, by the way, uh, and very affordable if you want the premium. And then Harvest is also one that's very popular. Yes. Uh, Harvest is another tool that I've found very helpful for time tracking. You know, the old spreadsheet way, if you have, like, part-time employees and then having to add that up at the end of the month and if they forget to uh, put the information down, it, it gets cumbersome, especially if the time isn't entered correctly, then Excel doesn't know how to count the time versus the number sometimes. So this seems to solve that issue in many ways. Uh, you can check in, check out on the phone or on a... a laptop desktop app 
uh, or online on their, their uh, version that way. Um, they have beautiful monthly, weekly, daily reports, colorful, uh, all those kind of things you need. It's great if you're billing clients. It's easy to forget to uh, start and stop something. Let's say you, you have time for a 12-minute little uh, tweak here. Well, you can start it and stop it in that time, and then it'll add it on to your uh, billable hours. In fact, it'll even keep track of, of the amount of earnings for that time as well. Um, there's the free version. I think you can manage one project, and then there's the uh, professional options that are very affordable. I think about $12 a month. So... Uh, Another really great tool. And John is a fan of, of MailChimp. I think this is one of my favorite out of all the <laughs> ones on my list. Uh, we use MailChimp, you know, with a liquid web for our affiliate uh, newsletters. So we have multiple newsletters that go out to different uh, particular networks or the in-house, and we segregate it with the groups. The things I like about this is, it's, you know, it's a flexible tool. You know, it's a freeware, but it also has premium versions. And, and some of the discrimination on freeware versus premium has to do with the size of your lists and how many lists that you actually have. Um, the importing tool is really easy. You know, it's pretty much straightforward name, address, you know, or just name and email address, you know. So um, you really can't mess up that kind of import. Um, but the nice thing about it, it also scrubs your list. You know, you have your unsubscribe on the bottom. You don't have to worry about it. As long as you keep one list consistent, you know exactly who's in, who's out. Um, there are really good templates, all different kinds of templates with uh, images and uh, multiple columns and so on and so forth, drag and drop in the, for the most case. Um, you know, you have a time send settings so that you can also stagger to different lists or group um, basically the same list into different uh, particular groups. So if you have like a very long five, ten thousand uh, person list and you don't want to send all of those out at the same time for whatever reason, you can group them up into multiple uh, uh, sends. You can look at scheduling time in the future, today, tomorrow, next week. And then the nice thing is you have your mobile access. So, you know, you're on the run, you're doing what you have to do. This is all set up to go. You take a look at it. The reporting is very robust. You understand open rates. You understand exactly um, feedback on, you know, what's happened with a particular scenario. If you have any kind of uh, email back from a particular, you know, customer or recipient of the newsletter. Um, and then there's also HTML export. So if you create it in MailChimp and you don't necessarily want to send it or you want to send it in another program, like some networks have their own newsletter settings, you can go ahead and scrub the or scrape the HTML, pop that into that particular distribution and um, have the same newsletter available. Um, it's something that we basically use. The, the, the 2,000 users or 2,000, I think, lists, uh, recipients is about the maximum per any list. So that's when you start getting into um, other fees. But, you know, that's a pretty sizable list, and especially for a small business or for someone who has, uh, you know, a limited number of folks that you're trying to communicate to. So I, I really like this one. I, I encourage you to take a look at it and, and use it where possible. The next one we wanted to talk about was freeconferencecall.com. This is another interesting one right so I've used these guys for years probably about five six years and for the majority of what I've used it for is for landlines you know for the old-fashioned conference call I don't exactly know how exactly they make money with that particular product because for years I've had my own phone number um, I've been able to do conference calls they have global access um, for that particular um, you know uh, user ID if you will and it's been great. Now they've come up with a newer version that's also online. It has video chat. Um, you have record options. You can do group meetings. You can do screen shares. These are really new features. I mean, it's stuff that you get, obviously, with some of the paid, you know, competitive versions, but this is a free, uh, you know, free use um, activity. And again, it's landline and or online. So, you know, if you don't have a conference line or you don't have a WebEx or some other account with a larger firm, I mean, this is great. It really works well. In the beginning, yeah, the clarity was a little bit hiccupy here and there, but these days, voice IP is better than landlines, you know? So um, I know Janine and I have been on conference calls for years <laughs> on my, uh, my free conference call com, And, you know, you'd think they would at least have a little advertisement when you dial in saying, you know, free conference call com, da 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 da. Somehow they can monetize that from an advertising perspective. You do see more advertising now in the video chats and so on and so forth on the bottom, but, you know, you can deal with that. Um, but for the most part, it's a really good little tool and, you know, something we wanted to share. And the last one that we've got in office management is Dropbox. 
That's another one of mine. So Dropbox, Dropbox is really an interesting story, and I won't get too involved because it kind of goes off the beaten path on what we're trying to accomplish here. But you know, this is one of the best players in cloud storage, and it's best because it's got a lot of publicity, has a huge user base, and they're fairly new. And you say, well, how did that happen? Well, they, they created like a really intense referral program, um, and they basically took their user base and then basically offered um, you know, a drop account without usage on that user base and then incentives for users to go ahead and refer friends and you know, folks that were recipients of emails for a Dropbox uh, uh, drop off of, of storage, stored information were then offered you know, a free account and it just spiraled and you know, 10 million users at this point, it's insane and it's a very, like 18 months that growth happened. So from, a, from an affiliate uh, case study perspective, they're a really interesting story. But they made the list mostly because they are a solution uh, for your file storage. It does sync to all particular devices you may have. Um, you do have the capability of 16 gigabytes free, and then they charge from there. 16 gigabytes is a lot unless you're doing videos and music, you know, then you get into a much higher level that you may need. But for general storage of information that you're, you want portable, um, that's more than enough. And, you know, the cross-device access is fantastic because some of us have Samsung, some of us have Apple, and then, you know, iCloud is not going to work for this and so on. Some of us have Mac, some of us have PCs. And, you know, you can go ahead and push out information. Um, if you go ahead and have a very large file that may be 10, 20 megabytes, you can do that email. So you give the Dropbox uh, location for the general public, you know, to be able to access. Um, so this is something that we... We think that, you know, with the sync functionality, with the multiple device functionality, with the availability of, of good storage um, for the freeware, um, it's something that you all should take a look at and, you know, even have a free account. Just grab it, you know, and, and, and go with it, if, whether you use it or not. It's something that's vital for, you know, what we do. Okay. All right. Now we're going to move on into marketing and research tools. And so the first one we wanted to talk about was Canva. And I really like this one because you can go in there and easily design things. I have no design talent at all. Ask anybody who knows me, I can't design anything. But with Canva, I can because it's very easy. It's, you've got basically a, a screen that you can just drag and drop stuff into. And along the side, you've got a list of tools. And so it's things like fonts. It's things like images that you might want to choose. It's things like little graphic things. So do you want a starburst here? Do you want, you know, bigger type or smaller type or whatever? So it gives you a lot of functionality that you can do. And it's got a large number of projects that you can do on it. So if you need your new Facebook um, banner, you can do it that way. You can do display ads on there. You can do posters. You can do business cards. As a matter of fact, at breakfast this morning, a friend showed us a card that he had designed using Canva in about 10 minutes, and it looked great. It really did. Mm. No one would have known that it was just something that he did himself and just grabbed a very quick piece of art to be able to do it. It looked really well designed. So, yay to you, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I mean, it's those kinds of things that, that just really can help you through it. Um, the way it works, basically, it's a free tool. Um, and you will only pay depending on what images or some of the other uh, graphics that you choose to select. But for example, I have two Siberian Husky dogs, so this morning I did a search on Siberian Huskies, and there were dozens and dozens and dozens of pictures before I stopped scrolling through, and they were a dollar a piece. So it's not anything that's going to break the bank. Um, and you might find that you get, you know, kind of a lot of better images if you go ahead and, and pay the dollar. So it's not expensive, it's not going to break anybody's budget to be able to do this, but it gives you a lot of choices in terms of how you can create and design something. You know, you can modify the backgrounds, you can modify the type colors, you know, position things, do all the angles and all those other kinds of fun things to really accomplish what you want to do um, with something that's very easy. They've got a uh, design newsletter. So you can sign up for that, and they'll email you tips on a regular basis. Uh, they've got some videos on there to kind of walk you through on how to do some stuff. So the support for the consumer experience, us being the consumer, is really quite strong. I found it to be very, very affordable. Um, you know, it's free to go ahead. If you don't want to pay a penny for anything, you can get through the whole process and not pay anything for whatever it is that you want to create. You may not have as many choices as you might if you paid, you know, the dollar or two for, for something like that. But um, it's nice to know that there's something like that around for people that couldn't design any other way. So I put myself at the top of that list. Um, the next thing we wanted to talk about was Wise Stamp. 
This is a tool I, I enjoy a lot. Um, I've, for years, I've admired creative email footers, you know, the email, the signature in an email. And it used to be only the really large corporations had those pretty little signatures on their emails. And then uh, I learned about Wisestamp and realized I could have one too. Um, they make it very easy to make a rich email signature, uh, to embed your logo or, or your photo. Uh, all the content information about you. You could use that tiny URL that uh, John mentioned and uh, track or, or bit.ly, something where you could track the clicks from your email signature. So uh, you, you can actually uh, do some creative analytics with that as well. But email signatures are, are important to have because so many emails are forwarded all over the place and it's a good marketing option. Wisestamp has a free version. I think it's branded. I have the uh, professional or a premium option, so I can make lots of different signatures depending on the uh, account or the context I need it for. Um, they also have the options to make them dynamic, so you could embed your latest tweet or an RSS feed in there. So it's got some creative options as well that um, you won't find at a lot of places. And it's worked on every email platform I've ever tried it with. I've tried Thunderbird and Apple Mail, uh, Gmail works. Um, so I've never seen anything it hasn't been able to work with. Highly recommend. The next one that we wanted to talk about was about Zoho. So this is another one of, one of my favorites. You know, I love being able to reach out to potential customers or partners or, you know, you know my affiliates and, you know, basically ask them questions. And Zoho is, gives you the capability of doing surveys. And, you know, simple is best with surveys, but you also want to keep it dynamic. You want to keep it fresh. You want to be able to uh, keep it as clear as possible. And then there is some theory into, you know, leading questions to the next question and being able to um, not influence, per se, particular answers. So um, you can you can figure that out individually, or you can go ahead and test it based on frequent surveys that may go out to particular groups. And this particular tool gives you those options. It's, it's a free option for the most part. Um, you import your lists. You group them any way you want. You could send out surveys. You can time the surveys. Um, you have results and reporting tools that really give you some insight into what the answers are because this is not just guesswork. You're getting actual answers from folks. Um, obviously, you want the most honest answers, so you want to make it as clean and as simple as possible. Um, you go ahead and you can have your mobile access, so if you have campaigns that go out to try to get feedback as quickly as possible, you can get that feedback on the road um, as quickly as you may need it. It's great on a flash if you have a group of people that you know are going to respond very quickly and you need a quick answer. It's amazing. It's amazing power that you have that you can just send this out. Somebody will just go ahead on their mobile phone, bing, bang, boom, and then you'll start seeing results coming through. Um, they have templates that they, you can use, but you can also set things up in your own fashion if you have, you know, specific ideas on how you want this particular survey. Um, you know, and it's just about, this is about getting information from people and then quantifying it and being able to report and understand what that information ne means. But, you know, these are little snippets here. So, um, you know, you can ask questions like from a, a, an affiliate manager's perspective, um, you know, we have recurring revenue. Is this important to you? Yes or no? Real simple, out and in. And if you need that kind of feedback from a majority of your uh, partners that you work with, as an example, you can get that in the afternoon. You know, you look at the open rate, you see there's a 40 or 50 percent open rate, you figure, okay, well, I have responses from half of the people I sent out, that's a good sample, and you have preliminary results on your survey as quickly as possible. So, you know, this is a lot of power in your hands, and, and again, it's a free tool for the most part, and it does scale up from there, but really you can use it on the free side if you need. We also wanted to talk about Owler.com. Yeah, so basically the next couple of them are real business intelligence kind of things. Um, Owler is, is really a, a nice little tool. It's mostly free, but you can go ahead and get into more granularity. But what this is, it's company news, information, intelligence, background, C-level, or information on the C-level of that particular company. You could set up a newsletter so that you're watching particular companies and get PR information for them or any kind of news activity or any publications that occur uh, within a timeline for that particular company. Um, 
basically you have daily snapshots on what's going on. And, you know, this is great for competitive information. You know, for me, I'd like to know what my competitors are doing, what's going on in my industry, how we compare our company versus other companies. And this is the kind of dashboard that I get on a daily basis. Sometimes daily is a little too much, but you can go ahead and spread it out over weekly or specific days of the week that you may want. Um, it's picking up the current PR activity. You can also set your settings so that you just get current PR and then get a daily, a, a weekly summary. So you can really streamline it so it doesn't become noise. And these things, in all cases with this freeware, there's a lot of noise involved because you don't want to unsubscribe because you're part of that particular tool and at the same time you don't want to get a daily update on something that you're not even going to pay attention to because then it becomes a lot of noise and that's really what the freeware they're trying to get you to be part of their subscription list so you have to manage that within itself and actually we didn't really find a tool on how to manage tools so that may be the next <laughs> the next particular pre presentation we do but you know you want to see the trending on the companies and and also from a social perspective, um, how are they prom promoting themselves from social media? You know, what kind of uh, unique things are they doing? So you get that kind of granularity too, but that's m more of that comes with the paid version. Um, but OWL is really a great little tool. And this combined with another couple that we're going to talk about is how I basically do competitive intelligence because, you know, we're sitting here trying to figure out not only what the competitors are doing, but who they're working with, right? So. Um, from an advertiser's perspective, that's a vital part of my job. And I think one of those who use is similar web. Yep. Yeah, I, I was going to talk about this one. It's, uh, we, we've had uh, Alexa, I think, for almost 20 years now, and uh, then Compete.com came along, and uh, both those are great tools, and I, I recommend using them. Uh, but now there's similar web, and uh, that, that has just a wealth of information on their free version and I, I can only imagine what the 199 a month one must provide because the free one is amazing and they're actually exhibitors here by the way I, I didn't know they were coming but I was impressed to see them here but if you need to look up competitor data or see what your the data on your site see how accurate it is it's pretty amazing um, you can get traffic and engagement data, organic and paid keywords that are being used. Uh, traffic level at a c country level, uh, internationally, um, they have uh, so many really powerful tools uh, in there. But one of the great things that, that's nice is you can actually get an extension for all the major browsers except Internet Explorer, but they even have uh, Safari and Opera in there where you can, with one click, get intelligence on that website. Uh, really helpful, highly recommend. They also have SimilarSites.com, so check that out as well. If, uh, if you see one site that's interesting and want to see any others like it, uh, that's another one of their products. So uh, really worth using for sure. One that I wanted to talk about was Iconosquare. And the reason why I like this, this is one that's going to help you analyze what's happening on Instagram, which, you know, is growing so rapidly, and we know how great it is to be able to have those kinds of visuals. But you want to be able to see, for example, this is going to help you track your follower growth, um, what their composition is, what their engagement is, so that you can evaluate what's really working and what isn't. Um, it'll help you see about how your hashtag performance is because you know on, on Instagram that's one of the most critical things that you can do is to see you know is to select exactly the right hashtags and that's what this is going to do is help you to see not just how they're performing for you but you can also take a look at a given hashtag and see who the top performers are and see who the top posts are you know who they came from what they were about that sort of thing so it gives you another chance you know as we were saying here about competitor analysis so that you can see you know what the other guys are doing quickly and, and uh, succinctly and really you know, be able to count and act on those results. Um, they have a very nice live chat support functionality on there. So you know, when you just get in there, if you're trying to figure out how to do something or how can I make this happen, you can just ping them and they are there. I've always had them be there in a heartbeat for me. Um, they also have kind of a fun little functionality that enables you to do um, post 
uh, to post a, a photo contest or a video contest or something like that. So if you just want to have some fun with your followers, it's a very easy way to do it, and they can handle all of those details for you just right through the uh, right through the program. So kind of love that a lot. Um, one of the things that uh, I think is great, they've got a free seven-day trial, so you can get on there and kick the tires and decide if you like it or not. Um, from that point, then there's three different price levels, so you can either pay $49 for um, the plus level, which is basically one program. Elite is $149 a year, and then they've got a corporate level of $499. And, you know, I mean, they're showing off their client list. They've got a lot of very serious clients that are doing a good job with uh, with using this that are choosing to pay that money and be on there so you know it's 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 worth trying the seven days and seeing how that works for you if Instagram is a serious part of your social media plan because they're going to be able to make a nice difference for you I think uh, the next one we wanted to talk about was Shopify and this is a great tool to use as a shopping cart for uh, for companies you know, even if you're just small and you've just got one or two products, they've got a program that's going to be able to work for you that's not going to cost a fortune, you know, which is always something that everybody's concerned about, but which is going to be able to enable you to, um, to actually get on there and start selling stuff. And it really was designed to be able to start fast. You know, it's not going to take you days and days and days to try and figure out how to integrate it. You should be able to do it in no time, really, um, which is nice. But the nice part, too, is it's also very scalable. So when you're past those two products, now all of a sudden you're 2,000 products, you can still use a lot of the functions that are in here and be able to grow with those. Um, one of the things that I like is that they've also got a whole system to calculate taxes and shipping. So you don't need to make yourself crazy on that. And it will also integrate with other programs so that when you're trying to figure out, you know, how much tax you have to remit to each of the taxing authorities, you can work with Shopify and, you know, tie it into QuickBooks. You can tie it into some of the more uh, elaborate services that are around. And I know speaking from an affiliate network standpoint, you know, we actually have special things that we do to integrate if we know that our merchant is using Shopify and we have merchants that are using it, you know, so I mean it can go to that level as well. Um, and I know that we're probably not the only network that does that. So, you know, it's one of the things to be able to consider um, when you're trying to choose what your shopping cart is going to be. Um, this is one that's been good that way. Um, they've also got a lot of ways to do like uh, customer service, uh, handle customer service and some other things on there. So um, if you're looking for a shopping cart solution, this is one that we really, really like. Mm -hmm. um, you can, yeah. yeah, yeah. You've done some things along those I, lines. I've used Shopify as well. Yes, you can. It's and it's got some good SEO options as well. Um, you'll have to work them, but um, but yes, you can. There's templates you can buy. There's plugins and things you can buy. Some are free. Some are add-on. Is the security good? I think that is one of the the biggest benefits. You don't have to worry about backups and, and security. That Shopify handles that, and you you just worry about your content that you want to sell and the information you want to share with your customers, and running their credit cards. <laughs> credit cards is a big deal for sure. Um, they do offer a 14-day free trial, so you can try it that way. Um, they have. Um, Four different pricing plans. At the time that we put these slides together and turned them in, there was one that was $9. That one's gone away. So their smallest program now is $29 for the basic version, and then you can work your way all the way up to $2.99 for the biggest plan. Um, the differences that you're going to find between the different programs is basically the credit card rates, the transaction fees, and the number of users that can be involved from your side in terms of working with this program. The next one we wanted to talk about was JotForm. And what this is, is a very easy to use online form builder. And so basically, uh, you know, if you need a contact us form, if you need a registration form, if you need an order form, if you need an application, this is some place where you can go and they've got templates already made. They've got um, backgrounds and lots of ways to customize for whatever it is that you might need for your company. So um, it, they've got widgets that'll do things like image sliders and checklists. Um, it's mobile responsive. So if you want something that's going to be able to work both on desktop and on tablet and on mobile, they've already got that built in, which is nice. You can link to things like um, YouTube. You can link to PDFs. You can link to maps if that's what you need to you know, try and share locations and stuff like that. Um, it'll connect with WordPress. Um, they've got a free starter kit. 
So basically the way that they monetize is by um, the number of uses of that form in a given month or any of uh, the total number of forms that you've got on there. So their free starter kit allows for 100 submissions a month. Um, from there you can go to 1,000 per month for $19. Uh, 10,000 would be $39 a month, and 100,000 is only $99 a month. So um, most of us that are sitting in here hmm, are not in the 100,000 range. So it's really you know pretty affordable to be able to do that, especially if you need some sort of a form for your customers to be able to fill out. It just makes it easy and clean, and um, you know friendly, and that's very important as well. The next one we wanted to talk about was WTS. You know, WordPress is the uh, most popular uh, content management system in the world. It started as a blogging platform, as most of us know, and now is used in e-commerce. In fact, uh, Shopify actually has a way to plug into WordPress now, uh, we, since we were just talking about that. But there's so many tools now and ways to integrate WordPress. Um, we might have a... And this is one of the, I, I like this uh, theme detector because I might see a site that does something that I think, wow, how do they do that? That's really neat. Or I like their layout. What are they using? And uh, I might think it looks like WordPress, but I'm not sure. Well, I can use this uh, uh, theme detector to find out if it's WordPress. And if it is, it will tell me what theme it is, unless it's custom, and then it's going to tell you it's custom. But um, so I know that, okay, well, they, they took something or they built their own theme. But it also will tell you some of the plugins that they're using on the site as well. So if you see this great functionality that you like, you might be able to find out how they're doing it. And um, if you can find several sites, combine all that intelligence from that, you'll probably get a pretty good idea of the plugins and themes and, and so forth that you need for yours. Um, there's also a WPThemeDetector.com, that's another site, so I sometimes run it through both uh, just to see if there's any additional information. And if I find out it's not WordPress, I like to go with BuiltWith.com, and uh, then I can get a little bit more information on, on the, uh, what they're using, uh, how it's hosted, things like that. So those are some really helpful tools for research or design or uh, just competitive intelligence. Oh, builtwith.com and wpthemedetector.com. That's a WordPress theme detector, also another tool. And our last section is content development. So the first thing we wanted to talk about was Uber Suggest, which is actually a keyword tool, <coughs> a keyword discovery tool. And it is not fancy. It is very simple and plain, but it's going to give you a lot of ideas. Basically, you put in the keyword, you pick what language you want, which is kind of fun. I mean, if you want English uh, you know, from the US, you can do that, or you can choose from New Zealand, or you can choose from the UK. And it's not just in English. It'll also give you Spanish and several other languages as well, and choices on where those are going to be from. You know, you hit submit, and it's going to come back to you with a whole nice long list. So um, for me, what I've always found is that it, it'll really prompt a lot of ideas of other things to, to start searching and researching to see what's right on there. It'll also give you um, Google Analytics trends on those particular keywords. And um, it'll also give you some variations on it. So for things like synonyms, it's a very, very fast way to find it. Um, it's totally free. It is not fancy at all. Um, and because it's totally free, there are some ads that are on there. There's a couple banner ads, so you just have to suffer through those, but they're not too bad, and they don't disrupt the process. So I think you might, um, might be able to like that. You've also got some choices, too. You can see whether those are top keywords just on the web. Are they popular in the news? Are they popular on YouTube? So there's a, a lot of variations on it. Um, the next one we wanted to talk about was search both. And this one I find useful if you're wanting to compare your uh, rankings or keywords across multiple search engines. Uh, it's, I don't, you know, you can op open lots of tabs and do the same thing, but if you want to see a side by side, this is a great way to do it. Enter it once, specify the engines you want to uh, do, and they have Google, Yahoo, Bing, and five others. So you can get a side by side comparison. It's not fancy, just search results. But uh, they have 18 localized international options as well, and it's a useful tool. The next one we wanted to talk about was who is. So this is simple. You know, this is something that probably about 50, 60% of the folks here know, but 
forty percent might not. So, you know, if you want to look up who owns a particular domain, um, this is back to business intelligence. Also, you're trying to figure out, okay, this particular URL, who owns it? Let me get a hold of it. And you could do that. You could do this for multiple reasons. You may want to buy that domain. Um, you want, may want to uh, look up who the company information is on that particular domain. You may want to know who the hosting company. You know, where is that IP address hosted? Um, things like that you can pretty much get from this particular free service. Um, obviously, Icon owns you know the, the reporting of all the domains anyway, so it's real information and it's real time. The only hiccup you get with this is you know um, one of the biggest trends, especially for smaller businesses, to do private registration. Um, larger companies probably won't have that, but um, you know smaller companies may. So this way they don't get spammed and the email addresses get spammed. Um, but at the same time, it's uh, very useful for the purposes that I had mentioned. Um, and for you to be able to, you know, back up and see if it's available, who owns it, and uh, where it's hosted, those three things. And then, John, I know you also like Majestic.com. Yeah, this all works hand-in-hand. Hand. Like, so we talked about Owler, we talked about Icon, we have some of the other business intelligence information. But, you know, this is, again, a good friend for an um, affiliate manager. It's a good tool. Um, basically, what this is doing is looking at backlinks. Um, so you put in a particular URL and it'll look, you'll search the web and understand exactly what is linking into those, that particular URL. Um, so the ba basic package includes, includes a reasonably large reporting suite, um, but really the paid version is where, the, where it really gets granular. Um, I had a company that did business intelligence for us. We you know, asked what GoDaddy was doing as an example because I'm web hosting. Um, and go ahead and get all the backlinks and all the information and all the sites and all the content. Um, it was a pretty large fee. It was a couple of thousand, not even eight, nine, ten thousand dollars. And anyway, he no longer does this and basically said, I use Majestic. That's how we get our information. It's part of the suite of information that we used to provide the information for you, and we did that some years ago. Some of the missing pieces of this, obviously, are company information, specifics on the URL that's being linked. So then you got to go back and look at, you know, Owler or look at Icon or any of the other tools that we mentioned. So this all works together. But basically, you're getting data by frequently click locations, so you can see where the majority of the of the clicks are coming from. Um, is it content site? Is it an ad? Um, is it a particular site that may be a coupon site as an example? So you could see the frequency of activity and the amount of click activities coming through from a particular partner of that particular URL. So you get a good insight into what um, their partners are doing, who you may want to content if you have a similar website that you want to partner with the same kind of people. Um, you're basically researching the competitor's activity. That's, that's what it comes down to and where the clicks are coming from. Um, so it's something that I use not on a daily basis, but certainly once a month. And you know, we use frequently to try to figure out where um, activities coming from from you know some of our competitors, and if there's something we missed in in the way we put together our program. Great. And then the last one, our number 31, is WP Engine, um, which only hosts WordPress sites, which you know are, are such a dominant uh, area this way. And basically, because they only work with WordPress sites. There's a lot of extra things that they do that are specialized just for that particular program. Um, they've got a lot of redundant systems, so they are known for not going down, which is a huge thing. They also load a little bit faster on WordPress sites than a lot of their competitors do. And as Mike was mentioning before, you know, I mean, that's considered um, a premium statistic as far as Google's concerned. Um, it's gonna make sure that you rank better because you've loaded just that micro uh, second faster. Um, also, if you've ever gone to any of Tim Ash's conversion conferences, he also talks about load time and how just that little tiny bit can make a difference in terms of how well your site will perform. Um, they've got enterprise level security, so all those times when you see somebody or hear of somebody else getting hacked, I think that's going to reduce the number of chances of you having the same thing happen to you. So that's, that's a good thing to do. Um, they've got a strong support team. So if you're not an expert at it, they're going to help you with it. Um, they definitely cost more than some of the other ones that aren't just um, WordPress. So uh, let's see, you can get a one month for one month for just a single program is $29. Um, but if you've got um, up to 10 installs, that's $99 a month. So, you know, if you've got a handful of sites, that's a good place to go. Um, and that also allows for 20 gigs of storage and 100,000 visits. And then, you know, you can take it up from there. So they're a really good product, and we have one other really good product on the platform. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and mention if you need uh, custom resources or anything like that, I personally use Liquid Web, which is John's option, because there were some resources that I, I couldn't do on WP Engine. 
uh, I needed to tweak some settings. And uh, Liquid Web has very good support and uh, handles what I need. Thanks for the plug, guys. I couldn't <laughs> make it myself. <laughs> So that's our 31. We have a couple of bonus ones, but uh, we're kind of running out of time here, so we will have to uh, share Wave and Jira is in your slide pack. Yeah. So that's all of our contact information. Um, we're going to be up here for questions. Thank you so much for everybody coming here and, and sharing this time with us this morning, and we hope you all have a wonderful summit. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. And, and obviously, most of you miss Snoop Dogg because you're here early <laughs> yes. enough to, for the early meetings. So thank you very much. Thank you.